All right, so um, the goal here is that instead of scripting inside of Rhino, which is also very fun and powerful, uh, we want to write scripts inside of Grasshopper, right? So we're going to use um, the nice things about Grasshopper's functionality, the fact that it's a visual programming environment, the fact that there's a lot of um, additional add-ons that we can access inside of Grasshopper, and that we get a kind of live preview of what's happening. Um, so we're going to use a couple of like those function bits of functionality in Grasshopper with Python. So Python is an add-on for Grasshopper, right? Um, so we have to specifically uh, install an additional um, file into Grasshopper so that we can access the Python script component. And um, Python can be used with Rhino's methods both in Rhino and in Grasshopper, and that means that we can change how Grasshopper creates solutions, right? How it results in geometry, right? And what this allows us to do, it's called the GH Python component. It allows us to access the Rhino script syntax. And Rhino script has been around at least from the beginning of Rhino 4. Um, and um, we can script using the Rhino script syntax with Python. And that by using the GH Python component, we're now doing that inside of Grasshopper. Uh, we can control the number of inputs and outputs to the component, so it's dynamic in that way. And we can also include libraries accessing the .NET SDK uh, for Rhino and other um, add-ons as well. And the nice thing is that it integrates with the new Python editor that's already included inside of Rhino 5. So um, let's install the GH Python object, right, which again um, is on the... Uh, food for Rhino site, which is where you can download it. It um, defines the GH Python component as a Python interpreter for Grasshopper, allowing us to execute dynamic scripts of any type. All right, so food for Rhino is where you can download it. You don't need to do this now because we've included this file for you. Um, but here you can see that on the food for Rhino site, um, you can download. Uh, the most recent version. There's some links to uh, discussions on forums on how to use the object, etc. And once we download it, install it, here's the, a preview of the Grasshopper Python script editor, right? So we can start to script inside of Grasshopper. So let's, um, let's go ahead and install it. First I'm going to show you uh, the kind of longhand way, and then I'm going to show you the way that um, we'll do it a different way together to make sure that everyone has the GH Python object installed, right? So as an add-on, we can access the folder where those add-ons are stored through the Grasshopper interface. If you go to File, Special Folders, Components Folder, this will open up the folder where any add-ons you're using will be stored, and you can copy the file that you downloaded or that we gave you into that folder. Now that means that you have to restart um, Rhino and Grasshopper so that it refreshes and understands that there's something new to load. The alternative way, which um, I prefer, is if we go to Grasshopper, right, it's open now, loaded in Rhino, and if we browse to the files that we gave you, right, Inside of the installs folder, you'll see a gh, gh python dot gha. The dot gha extension means grasshopper assembly. And if you don't already have the Python object, you can drag this onto the grasshopper canvas and it will install it. Right? I've already done that, so I'm not going to actually drag it over. Uh, but just drag it onto the canvas and if you go to the math script tab, you should now see this Python script object. And just go ahead and drop it onto the canvas to make sure that um, it's working. All right, so I'm going to take just a couple seconds to make sure that uh, you can all install this object uh, successfully. Again, if you have any troubles, just go ahead and um, write a message in the questions window. And once again, we're going to drag this file that you downloaded onto the Grasshopper Canvas. And you should now have a new object here under Maths Script.
Okay. Was everyone able to get that working? Let's go ahead and confirm in the questions window before we go any further. Great. Okay. So let's move on then. All right. And the first thing we're going to do is create a Grasshopper Python object. Okay. So um, if we can, uh, if we've installed the Python script component, uh, we can drag it onto the canvas, and it's going to look something like this. Now we've gone ahead and added some notes here. Um, so you'll see the orange object with the little Python symbol. It should say X, Y, out, and A. Remember that the left side of our component is an input. The right side is our output. Um, and to access the script editor, we can double click the center portion of the object. And um, we're going to need to very quickly start to work with uh, the inputs and outputs of the component, right? Specifying what this should be. Should it be called X or something else? Do we need more inputs or more outputs? And then one additional note that makes this a little bit different from most other Grasshopper objects is that here we have a special out output. And this gives us the execution information for the script that's running inside of this. So if you get any errors, this is how we're going to check for errors, right? You can see in this screen grab, it's orange. That means that there's nothing, there aren't any errors. This is also orange, which is a warning because there's nothing inside it, right? So then output is going to come from every one of these um, labeled, uh, letter labeled um, nodes here that may grow beyond just one uh, very, very quickly. All right, so with that, right, if we double click to um, open the, ed the script editor, we're going to start to type some script. And this is one example, right, um, of what we might script, uh, which is just to make some spheres. All right. So before we actually start writing our script, let's review a couple of notes related to Python syntax. Python is case sensitive. That means upper and lower case um, definition matters. So my number, spelled like this with a capital N, this is called conventionally camel case in programming shorthand. It's not the same as my number all in caps. Right? So it's case sensitive. Python is space sensitive. This is a little bit unique uh, related to most programming languages. So my number camel case is not the same as my space number. That space is read by Python and understood to be different than this. Also uh, somewhat unique to, py to Python, Python is indent sensitive. So my number is not the same as if there was a tab icon here, right? If you've tabbed over or spaced over, my number, right? So case, space, and indent sensitive.